Hey, welcome back, Knife Nerds and Everyday Care People. It's your boy, the Big Connector, coming at you with a review after a little bit of a hiatus. Um, I apologize to everybody. I was just out doing a little bit of camping. Uh, and you know what? I have my granddaughter with me the majority of the time. And it's awfully tough when you've got a three-year-old to shoot some videos. So, I, you know, I apologize. I was away for a bit. And I, if I didn't get back to you, any of your questions or comments... As quickly as I'd normally like, you know, I do apologize for that too as well. Um, where we camp has actually got very, very uh, minimal cell service. You actually kind of got to stick some tin foil in your ear, stand on one foot, your tongue in your cheek, and you face north uh, with one arm outstretched and you may get one bar. So it's, you know, it's really, really weird out there with uh, no cell service. It's, man, oh man. I'm I'm almost 50 years old and I was always kind of a technical guy but man oh man I sure miss my smartphone I, and I know that you know you you got to be out there you got to be present in the moment but I am so used to if I have a question and I wonder oh my goodness you know what is the uh this particular anagram stand for I can look it up and I can find out the answer instantaneous knowledge is what I love my phone for and I miss it so that's my that that may be me maybe you're the type of guy who likes to sit around the campfire and and be present in the moment I am too but damn it if I have a question I want answered I want it answered now <clears throat> now let's go over something here that has been in my uh in my uh, uh, rotation, I guess you'd say, for the last couple of years. And I, I have to admit that I haven't um, EDC'd this as enough, I think, as much as I should have. Uh, I think this is an absolutely fantastic knife. And what I basically use this for is it's in my sharpening kit. And when I'm, you know, if I, if I want to tape the, you know, the handle of something or the blade, I use this to, you know, cut the tape. I also use it to open up boxes and packages and stuff like that just in my office. And I think I'm going to put this in my pocket and I think I'm going to every day carry this a whole lot more over the next little bit. But let me give you some impressions of this fine, fantastic GEC or Great Eastern Cutlery Farm and Field Tool uh, number 71 pattern. So let's just quickly go over here uh, as this is how your GECs will come. And it, the, now just some, uh, I guess, some background on GEC. They're Great Eastern Cutlery. Uh, they are located in uh, Titusville, PA. And it is my understanding that a lot of the old blanks and tools to make a lot of these old traditional knives were left, uh, you know, I'm not going to say rotting or rusting, and they ended up taking these old patterns and bringing them back. So um, these traditional uh, slip blade knives are back with a vengeance of GNC, and GEC is known for its quality and its workmanship, uh, its fit and finish, and they are extremely highly sought after. Now this particular knife here uh, is not anything that is super special. I mean, I really like the uh, linen micarta on this knife. It's a three inch blade. It, it is, but it is still really kind of hard to get. Any of the GEC that are um, high end uh, knives, uh, they're so hard to get. Uh, you you kind of basically got to put your name in for one. And it's not like you can go buy yourself a paramilitary too, where you just want whatever color blade steel or whatever, yada, yada, yada. You just click the button and you got it coming. With it's a little bit more involved with the traditionals, especially the GEC. All right, so now, so they come in this little tube, and it's just a wonderful, um, wonderful, uh, I guess, look into the past uh, with these uh, particular knives. Uh, I, I've had a lot of fun, um, you know, with knives in the past, and you know, I've had some some knives that are. Uh, you know, tactical. I've had knives that are great big honking pieces of steel with crazy goofy locks on them and flipper tabs. And you know what? I've had a lot of fun. But there's something about a traditional, you know, you know, that just is, <clears throat> it just kind of warms your heart. I don't know about you guys, but when I was a kid, I mean, I had the small little, uh, we called it a jackknife. And it was just basically kind of a clip point 
little small knife that was probably with a two inch blade so I couldn't, you know, cut something. Uh, I, you know, I couldn't hack a finger off or anything like that. You know, you get it from your dad or your, an uncle. And um, I love that, you know, that little first knife, jack knife that I had. And uh, this kind of brings me back just with a little nail nick, you know, the, the half stop on it. And that's what I, I really enjoy about traditionals. Now, let's quickly go over this here a little bit. I'm not sure if you can see that in there, but you've got 71, 51, 18 red linen micarta. And that's how all the GECs will come with that little code. All right, so now the 71, the first two is your pattern. So that is your farm and field tool, bullnose. Um, your five is your blade sh shape, which is gonna be say like a drop point here, or, and then you've got your date of manufacture, the year of manufacture, which is 18. So 2018 is when this was built. And the way to get into these here is, how they like to do it is, you use another traditional and you just reach in there and you pop it open like that. And then inside it came wrapped in a real, just a heavy duty wax paper. I don't know, there's just something about, you can smell the factory in there. And uh, this little, uh, this little uh, cardboard tube just adds to the whole uh, the whole thing of a GEC knife. All right, now the reason I kind of went with this is a I love the red linen micarta. I wanted to just kind of try out something that was uh, traditional, and uh, this the this farm and field tool was one that was easily I'm not gonna say easily but readily available where it wasn't put on a wait list or waiting for a long time. And you know what? I have been very very happy with this uh, little bugger here. So. Let's go over some size comparison here real quick. Of course, we've got the little Dragonfly 2. You can see how we've got, uh, it stacks up against that. And then you can see also where the Paramilitary 2, it looks like a giant compared to this. And um, it just seems to be a good traditional EDC size. All right, let's close this up. We'll get that out of the way. Now, now, if you're going to carry a traditional, lots of times they don't come with a clip. They come with just basically a blade, one, two, or three blades, and, uh, you know, a spring in the back, and uh, no clip. And so, therefore, you definitely want to, I think, uh, put it in a little slip. And that's what I've done with this one here. You know, just as a nice little leather slip is what that's called. And it fits in your front pocket, and you're not scratching it up, and you're not uh, destroying your knife floating around with your keys or change in your pocket or anything like that. And um, yeah, so it does, you know, I'll do a lot to protect it. Now, let's open this up. So now when you're talking about traditional knives, a lot of times they talk about what's called walk and talk. And that is basically your pull strength and the sound that your knife is gonna make when it clicks open. And I'm not a big expert on traditional knives, but this uh, particular one has got a little bit of a pull to it. They would rate it on a scale of one to 10. Um, if you've got something, the lower the number, say one, two, or three, that means your blade is really sloppy and your spring is not very tight and it's not a very satisfying pull. Uh, you've got 10 where you can hardly get it open. I would say that this one is probably rated at around an eight or so. Uh, and that seems to be kind of the most desirable, you know, seven, eight seems to be your most desirable uh, pull strength. Um, now, the steel on this particular model is a 1095 steel, which you know is not, um, it's not rust proof. So you're, you're going to want to protect this blade. As you can see that it is a uh, fingerprint magnet, but the 1095 steel is extremely tough and it can take a wicked edge. And I have to tell you that out of the factory, this knife was really, really sharp, and I stropped the heck out of it, and it went berserker sharp. Uh, I'm not sure if that's an actual tactical term, but damn it, it was sharp. Uh, definitely shaving sharp, right, you know, as soon as I put it to the strop. And that's all I really need to do to maintain the edge on this knife is basically just strop it, and it, uh, and it comes right back. But I haven't been doing a whole lot of heavy-duty cutting with this. When I first got it, I cut a bunch of cardboard with it just to check out the 1095. And you know what, I was pretty happy. And it's kind of a weird, an odd thing um, with these traditional knives is uh, if I've got a regular, 
uh, see, paramilitary to uh, a knife that I'm going to EDC. I, I, this the, the steel type really, really, I'm a steel snob, you know, the S30V steel or, you know, I think, well, that's, a, you know, a decent steel. I know this, I know that about it. But in the grand scheme of things, this 1095 steel is, it's tough, takes a great edge, and it has, you know, low to midland, low kind of, uh, edge holding ability but an, an attritional knife I just don't care I mean I certainly wouldn't want it to have you know 8c or 13 mov but I'm certainly happy with the 1095 steel in there um, I'm not going to use this knife to uh, you know cut time and space like I might try to do with my uh, paramilitary too but for this I just really like the fact that it takes a nice edge and the fit and finish is phenomenal on this knife it's just ah. I don't know, if you're into collecting traditionals, I think you're into a little bit of nostalgia and you're into, I think, a lot more different things than you are if you're, like, I'm a regular collector here. Um, you know, the fit uh, the fit and finish is important, of course, but the fidget factor, that is extremely important to me in a regular knife, but on a traditional knife, not so much so. Uh, what's important to me in a traditional knife is, will it cut? Will it cut comfortably? Does it feel cool and does it look cool? And I think the GEC hits that on all, it fires on all eight cylinders with that. Now, so just kind of go over to this a little bit. So of course we've got the, um, uh, the OD linen, the, the, the red linen micarta, which feels wonderful. Um, blade length you've got here, which is a three inch blade not too huge you know three and a half has always been my perfect edc size but three inches definitely get the job done for sure um now your uh close length is three and 13 16 inches so it's a little bit more than three inches um you're going to be running at overall length of just shy of seven inches which is six and seven eight inches it's so close to you know seven inch but it is you know, I'm a big guy, I've got big hands, and it fits in my hand, you know, extremely well. you got to be careful. There's no guard there, you know, but you're not going to take this traditional knife and, you know, do a lot of puncturing with it. I mean, that's one thing about, you know, having such a nice blade spring is if you do have to do a little bit of, you know, uh, you know, puncturing, you're not going to have this knife close on you and, you know, cut your fingers off. But, I mean, because it is a uh, slip joint, you do have to be careful. There's no lock on there. Just you know, just use your head, and you and you'll uh, you'll end up having all your fingers at the end of the day. But um, you know, extremely light at uh, two point four ounces, um, gonna not feel it at all in your pocket, and it, it it carries so nice. And it's just, I don't know, just GEC has is I think the benchmark. I mean, there are other traditional companies out there. Um, but it seems to be GEC is the one that is the most desirable. You know, Case is uh, another uh, uh, company out there that makes uh, traditional knives. And I think I'm going to be looking at trying to get into some Cases too as well. You've got Boker and their tree brand. They do some. And then you've got a whole multitude of traditional knife makers that I, or traditional knife companies that I, you know, I, I can't even begin to list how many there are out there. But just be careful. I mean, there's like, like Winchester, some, and there's just some real goofy names, and I'm not well versed in there to tell you what's a great company, what's a not, other than I know that GEC is, seems to be the benchmark in traditionals. Uh, Case seems to be a good quality uh, traditional knife, and uh, the Boker Tree brand seems to be, you know, made in Germany. They seem to be a good traditional knives too, as well. So, ah, would I recommend this knife? Um, absolutely. I, I think if you're just maybe starting off, you don't want to spend a million bucks because these uh, GECs, uh, uh, they can run a pretty penny. And lots of times too, if you're buying them on the secondary market, they are going to be above what the retail seller would sell them for. That's how much these things are desirable. So this particular brand here, or this particular uh, pattern, a 71 pattern is readily available. You're not going to pay an arm and a leg for it. I do believe this was somewhere around $50 American. And, uh, you know, I, I did have to buy it out of the States. It did take a little while to get here into Canada. 
but uh, it was well worth the wait to have this in your pocket and I'm going to be carrying this I think a whole lot more in the future uh, just to uh, check it out uh, a whole lot more here I want to put it through some more paces um, the biggest knock I have on this knife is this red linen micarta it, this doesn't over the last two years, this has faded, and I've tried to add some mineral oil to it, um, you know, and it works for a little bit, but I think the only thing that might bring this back is just just using it every day. Perhaps the oils in your skin will maybe bring it back, uh, but that's the biggest knock I've had on this is the red on this was so much more vibrant when it got to me, and over time, it has seemed to have faded a little bit. So I'm going to give this knife a scale of 1 to 10. I'm probably going to give it about a 7. And the biggest hit is going to be this fading. So would I, yes, would I recommend this? Absolutely. Should you get one? I think so. If you're a serious knife collector and you want to try a traditional, this uh, 71 pattern is one I think that's not going to break the bank. It's going to give you an idea of what it's like to carry a traditional, especially a GEC um, and it's going to be a whole lot easier to get than some of their uh, more expensive patterns, and uh, especially in the aftermarket, you don't want to. You don't want to. Um, if you can get one right from one of the original retailers or GEC, it will save you some money because you're not going to see these knives on sale. That's for sure. They uh, they seem to appreciate right out of the factory into somebody's hands, and then somebody will put them on eBay for a whole lot more money. That just seems to be the way it goes. You get a product that's in demand, and uh, that's what happens to it. So, I wanna say thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful week. Hope you guys stay safe, especially with uh, what's going on out there. Please, please stay safe. I know that we're, uh, everybody's getting sick and tired of being at home and, and uh, stuff like that, but you know what? We're not out of the woods yet. So please, please listen to the professionals that are out there uh, and stay safe. Remember, keep your stick on the ice, the shiny side up. This is the Big Conductor saying adios.